Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Muska. And welcome to Over Central. So one trick seems to be something that people have spoken about quite a lot recently. We've already seen a few videos going over how players that could only play one hero are the sole problem in Overwatch, that they are toxic and just bad people and that they should feel bad. It's kind of easy to scapegoat players with this mentality to only play one hero and refuse to switch to anything else. And it's something we've obviously come across in our own Master Series. So far we've covered the likes of Sombra, Bastion, Junkrat and Mercy in our Master Series and a majority of these players' playtime are on the heroes in question. We've seen the likes of Cody, Eevee, Crow and Colorblind both growing ranked and in their own viewer base on Twitch. So when I see players like this criticised in the community, I get a little bit defensive, like I'm their mother. Well, the mother of the One Trick Dragons thought it was a good time to talk about predominantly playing one hero, even maining to an extent, the problems that you can have there. But also with Arisa on the horizon, we know that some players are looking to be Arisa only accounts. Another reason why we made the Arisa worth playing video. But basically, it boils down to this. We're going to go over the whole topic and then go over how to effectively learn a new hero. Should you dedicate a lot of hours into it only or should you transition across? We'll explain more. It's also worth adding that the footage on screen is of course some of our master players. We've got Eevee on the Mercy, Crow on the Junkrat and of course Falky on Farah. You can find all of their details in the description below. They're all very talented, very knowledgeable players so do definitely check them out if you want to improve on these heroes. Those familiar with Sid Meier's civilization will be familiar with these terms that we're going to use now. These are playing wide versus playing tall. Playing wide in Civ is basically making a lot of cities and expanding your empire, but all these cities have a fairly low population. Basically what you're doing is not putting all of your eggs into one basket and making sure your resources are spread across your whole empire. Then playing tall is having very few cities, putting all your resources and time into making sure your very few amount of cities are very strong, well managed and churning out as much as they possibly can with the attention you give them. Learning Overwatch heroes instead of building these cities is kind of the same. You can learn several heroes at once, meaning that you're flexible and you can play a few heroes to an acceptable level, or you can play tall, put all your time and energy into learning one hero at a time, mastering them, and then using them to climb in ranked. Both of these methods have their advantages, but as you can see, one tricks are basically those tall players that want to put their eggs in one basket, but maybe do it a bit too much. When it comes to learning new heroes, you want to make sure that you're striking a balance between the two. We'll go over how to do this further into the video, but we just wanted to highlight that both are valid ways of learning a hero, but playing pure tall has its own negative connotations. It's important to distinguish the difference between the one tricks that we've had doing master guides that are in high GM top 500 and the ones that are in plat games, playing Genji, not really doing much and getting very toxic when they're asked to change. First of all, pretty much every master guide that I've done with one tricks, they've all expressed how stupid they are for just playing that one hero. Eevee and Crow basically turned around to me and said, sometimes it really sucks and I know I should be playing these heroes as much as I do. When talking to these GM players when it comes to giving tips, one of the first things they will say is I should not be doing this. The best way to consider these players are like guinea pigs, putting themselves out there in less than favoured situations to learn what works and what doesn't. Talking to these players and learning when their heroes work and don't work is incredibly important when it comes to learning them. They like to be experimental and to make sure that stuff works. For example, it's common knowledge that Junkrat isn't favoured on attack on any map, yet Crow still plays it and Crow wins a lot of games. I mean, he's got the GM, he has to have, right? Speaking of Crow, I actually messaged him a couple of days ago asking if he had anything to say on the topic now that we're bringing it up. It was a fairly lengthy response to say the least but he did bring up some pretty good points. One section he said was the community right now seems to misunderstand versatility. I think most people think of a versatile player as someone who can play a lot of heroes, as in one could do many. I see it the same way but apply it to the hero itself. So one hero can be played in multiple ways, i.e. short range, long range, defensively, aggressively, in a support manner, in an area denial manner, all classes have answers to these problems. To say that we know as a fact how all hero matchups will play out is insane, that saying we will know everything there is to know in Overwatch at this point in time, and it's also suggesting the meta will never evolve. As a sports fan, I always related to people that play specific positions. No one bitches that a pitcher only plays pitch, and goalies only play goal and such. And this is probably the important bit. If people can only play one class, and that's all they do, I'd consider it poor on their part. But if you could play one class and figure out Overwatch fundamentals from it, and how to answer these questions and issues, then you're a better player than everyone else. At the end of the day, it's a necessary evil, it will never go away, it can it would be healthy if it did, so work with it, it's like getting angry at the tides. You can't really do much about it except exploits its advantages. 
What's the Meta is one of our favorite series to make and I feel it's a good way of getting a gauge of changes and what it means for that hero's pick rates. It's not meant to be a meta report of sorts, especially at a competitive level, it's more of us analyzing the changes, how this has affected games we watch and play and then basically saying to you, hey, Fire is really strong right now, it might be a good idea to pick her up if you want to play her a bit. What's the Meta has always been described as Overwatch's stock market to us. Hero value rises and falls all the time, and your resource here is time to play. So basically what you're investing is time into these heroes, and the better they are in the current nature and ecosystem of the game, the better you'll do with those heroes that you've invested a lot of time into. But this playing by ear mentality when it comes to the meta does also cause issues. This audio clip here from Pro Like Crow, the Junkrat main who is arguably one of the smartest players we have had the opportunity to talk to, sums this up very perfectly when it comes to learning one hero in an out of meta, out of situation. At a certain point you do have to get braver and I believe that's an issue in just the Overwatch community in general is that as soon as a hero starts to encounter an issue, a uh, Blizzard has said like, oh, it's not your fault, you're not bad at the class mechanically, you just have to make a decision to play another class. So what they do is they run away from each class that they encounter a hard situation. And if you think about that in life, how would you ever get good at anything if you run away as soon as something gets difficult? Right, and there's no glory or there's nothing impressive about playing a class when they're strong. It's all about mitigating their weaknesses and playing class when you more or less shouldn't. Uh, I'm not saying to pick these classes when they're weak, like in a professional match. Don't lose on purpose, but at the same time, you're going to have to play these classes when they're weak to learn to get better at them. Uh, and that's kind of why I, I stuck to Junkrat. Everyone said he's pretty bad in, in most situations. I was like, you know what, I just really need to, to pound away at this class, grind it out, and, and learn to mitigate your weakness, and, and then the class starts having some viability. Valkyr is a perfect example of this. Whilst he isn't a one-trick like Eevee and Crow are, he obviously plays a lot of Pharah. She was out of favor for such a long time, but Valkyr still stuck at it. Played her in an ill-favored position, and now that she's a valid choice in competitive and the pro scene, he absolutely soars with her. All of that time he spent in Masters chugging away at her has been rewarded, and now he's near enough in the top 100 of players. And not necessarily that it's the right way to play Overwatch. Far from it, and we'll go over why now, but players being focused on mastering one hero, and that's exactly what it is, is beneficial for us learning these heroes too. We just don't have to put ourselves in horrible situations because of it. But also mastering a hero in itself is knowing when this hero doesn't work, in whatever composition you may have, or what composition the enemy has. Claiming that you want to play one hero, mastering that hero, and then ignoring the fact that that hero doesn't work in some situations, and I mean completely hard countered. Playing against stuff that's good against, you can maybe get away with it. You don't get better by not playing against your counters, right? It's like the Pharaoh with a soldier situation all over again. But that's the difference in itself. So these are kind of the good things about one tricks and focusing a lot of time on one hero in particular, but there is also this stubbornness that some of these players bring into the ladder just by playing one hero feeling like they should be able to pick that hero every game basically. And it's kind of something that you, if you focus a lot on one hero, have to sort of learn to deal with as well. These are players that have climbed to high GM and top 500. And I could definitely see a player like Cody, for example, play other heroes than Sombra and still be top 100, but he fancied a challenge, he saw the potential with Sombra and decided to practice this and play her. When focusing so much on one hero though, you have to also think about role a lot and how that hero can fit into a team lineup. Eevee is a mercy player we've talked to recently and it's really good to have a dedicated support player as it's something that the team will always need and someone like Mercy can be fitted into a lot of different lineups too. Though in some of his games in the past a Lucy would have been much more beneficial to his team, he might still be able to play Mercy to a much much higher level, meaning that Mercy is still the better pick. We also have Colorblind who was recently on a video for us and the thing with Colorblind and Eevee in particular when it comes to the sort of one tricking with them is that they are incredibly communicative and coordinated with their team on top of this one trick type of hero that they revolve around. They know that for them to succeed they need to work together in a team as opposed to those 33% win rate Sombra only accounts in low diamond that leaves voice chat before the game even starts. <sighs> It's not a problem with one tricks, it's a problem with stubborn players which in Overwatch are everywhere. Frankly, I can deal with a Sombra only account that's incredibly good at callouts and communicates well with their team, rather than someone that just likes to fill and hops on Lucy and then doesn't say a word. Overwatch does have problems with toxicity, flamers, non-cooperative teammates, but putting all one trick players into the same pool of Overwatch problems just isn't fair. It's not always the best way to play the game, but it's far from the worst thing that one can be doing within Overwatch. 
So finally this brings us on how to learn a new hero. This is something we've spoken about in our big season 4 guide and really you want to be looking at what heroes you can already play to an acceptable level and transition into like minded heroes. Going from somebody that plays a lot of Reinhardt to playing Hanzo is obviously going to be really tricky but transitioning to maybe a Winston, Zarya or Diva from a Reinhardt is a good shout. Lucio is fairly similar, we see a lot of players stuck on playing a DJ but in reality you can easily transition into the likes of Ana, Zenyatta and Mercy. The easiest way to look at what heroes you can quickly and effectively learn based off your own hero pools is looking at what the pros play as well in their hero pools. If you play a lot of Genji for example and you want to learn another DPS class then see what other pro Genjis are playing alongside Genji in their hero pool. You'll be surprised how many transferable skills you've picked up when it comes to playing Overwatch and you'll be surprised which ones can transition nicely across different heroes. For example if you play a lot of Zarya we see a lot of pros playing Farah alongside so she might be another hero that you might want to pick up as well. But that's it for this time thank you very much for watching do let us know what you think of one tricks in the comments below. Hopefully you've seen the point we're trying to make that not all one tricks are bad players. In fact, they're mechanically and effectively good, but it can be really difficult to play around them. And that's the problem we wanted to highlight. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then.